Yeah, and notice, Ben, notice his analysis of entrepreneurs. What the market does is it takes people who otherwise would have started wars. So his mm. whole view is that the kind of motivation that drives people to destroy is the same motivation that drives people to create. And there's that blending of economic and political power going on in his view of what motivates entrepreneurs. And it's the same one that's going on in the blending of um, a person who is able to legally stop you from competing with his business to a person who's just so good that he's very hard to compete with. You know, I think it's, it's super important that the essence of capitalism is not competition. The essence of capitalism is freedom. It's freedom from force, freedom from fraud, uh, freedom from the very kind of force that antitrust law exhibits and intensifies. Uh, competition is a byproduct of freedom. And if you have a real competition, then you have to hold out the possibility that someone is actually at some point going to win that competition. Otherwise, it's not a real competition, some kind of phony, uh, a centrally planned government scheme, which is the thing that Andreessen alleges he's opposed to. Uh, in fact, being able to win a competition in a free market is exactly what you need if you, if you care about technological innovation and progress. It's winning in a competitive market where one person becomes dominant and profits because of it, because of that, that they're able to accumulate the capital that drives innovation forward. There are certain kinds of projects that right now, um, players like Amazon and, and Microsoft and Facebook are able to engage in because they've accumulated this, this pile of capital that where they can invest in the long term in ways that no other tech startups can do. And so that's the point just in relation to if you want to have technological progress. But of course, it is also important to go back to the moral and philosophical point, which is to say, if someone actually creates a superlative product on a free market, where the reason that everybody's buying Microsoft's operating system is because it delivers a incomparable value at the price point that it's offered. They've earned that success through their own ability. And here it's not just the computer technical ability, but also the, the business ability that it takes to create and do market research. You deserve what you get. If you've done that, you deserve the results. And so it's not just you are a conduit to progress for the human race. No. The trade is a conduit to your improvement and it doesn't come at anyone's expense because they decided the money they spent on that operating system was worth less than getting the operating system. And so they've profited too. Both players have profited, both have lived as ends in themselves. And one of the things that somewhat galls me about this manifesto is the emphasis that's put on the importance of acceleration and growth. Uh, that spirals continuously upward for the sake of a society, but not for the sake of the companies, not for the sake of the individuals who compose them and run them and conceive of them. Why should the society's level of progress be able to continue, continually accelerate itself, but individuals shouldn't? Why is it that they should be exploited to benefit all of us to use Andreessen's language? No justifications given. I don't think any can.